let's talk about uh, Chain Doe for for a second. Um, it's it's a milestone for hard, not only hardcore but for extreme music as well. And it, I guess for a lot of bands it would be a blessing to have this record in, in the catalog. But I figure that somehow it might also be a burden because all your efforts are always compared to Chain Doe. And like I, I did it myself. I said, oh, it's maybe as good as Chain Doe. What do you what do you feel about uh, Chain Doe? Is it more a burden or more a blessing? Or do you just basically not care? It's just a record for you. It's just a record for me. You know, just like any other record that we've done. Um, I think it's sort of ironic that people champion the record because when we released it, a uh, majority of the the uh, feedback from people was that it was it was pretty much hated across the board by most people in heavy music and in, in hardcore music, especially the press for the, the record was immensely negative. Um, I remember the, the guy who did the press for the record, who sort of organized things, gave me a, like a book, like a few hundred page like booklet of all the reviews and they're almost all horribly negative. Um, and I still have it, I think it's brilliant, I think it's hilarious. Um, but it's fine, you know, people, our music isn't really meant to be Uh, digested easily by first level listeners of heavy music you know we're an abrasive band we're a hard band to get into and if you don't have certain kind of reference points for what we're doing you're not going to get it you know so like if you're just kind of into more sort of commercial um, sort of pop like metal that's out there um, that has you know like the big soaring choruses and a lot of like sort of uh, auto-tuned things and a lot of melodious moments that are pretty simple you might not get a band like us we, we may be a little too frantic um, and it, it was like that then and it is like the, it's the same way you know when we released Jane it was like that and it's the same way now um, but yeah for me it's just another record you know if our music connects with somebody it's awesome but uh You know, I think that, that all, all records are just as emotionally valid for me, so. This song is on our new record. Thank you so much for being here. It's about love. It's called All My Shield. Last week something terrible happened uh, in the U.S. There was mm -hmm. a, another school shooting in Connecticut, um, and this whole awful incident spurred a discussion on U.S. Guns law, gun laws again. So I wanted to ask you, what's your opinion on, on the gun laws? And well, I think it's a bigger, there's a there's a bigger story there that has more more to do with mental illness, and that has a lot to do with how the world treats mental illness and certain behaviors that I think could be potential um, warning signs for extreme behavior in some way. Um, as far as gun laws go, Connecticut has some of the most strict laws in the country regarding guns. It has um, bans on certain uh, capacity magazines and things like that for, for, for guns and and for, for ammunition and, and, and whatnot. So um, it, is, it is fairly strict. Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New York, and California are the, I believe, are the, the most strict in the country when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, I personally don't feel that there's any use for, um, for civilians to have 
you know, lar like large, ridiculous, fully automatic weapons or anything like that. I think recreational things are fine as long as they're handled responsibly, just like anything else. I don't think, I don't, I don't think most substances should be illegal either. You know, I think they should be personally taxed in a certain way and and sort of uh, maintained and managed in, some, in, in a way as well. Um, but again, there's extreme personalities out there. And uh, there sadly is some mental illness that can, you know, bring some, you know, horrific um, things to, to reality at times. You know, I don't know if it's, it's, it's not necessarily something that's the norm um, in the U.S. doesn't happen all the time, but we do have these incidents. They do happen. You have them here in Europe as well. You know, uh, you, was it, I believe it was in Norway um, or Sweden? Two years ago, when the gunman went to the island and it shot, was in Norway. It was Norway. Yeah. yeah, that would that was intensely heavy as well. Um, that was a case of mental mental illness as well. We have some some people here in Austria, yeah, that you might have heard of. Um, Fritzl maybe it was a case. I don't know. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm I'm not too sure. But you know, I also have to say too. I mean, there's like these there's horrendous things that happen every day in in the Middle East as well. You know, where um, I read. I read that uh, yesterday morning, you know, 10 little girls were killed by, uh, by a uh, landmine while they were walking to school. They were all ripped in half. Don't, you, don't you think that the problem here is that um, with the Connecticut sh shooting or in Norway, and there's, there's one person, the media is able to portray this one person, and we have a scapegoat. It's this person. And the media is, is somehow able to, to like glorify it in a negative way. No. So people can read about, oh, he had this, uh, I don't know, this illness, and he did to the media to is blah, the blah, blah, blah. All media is out for advertising um, dollars. They're all there for ad revenue. That's what they all want um, at the end of the day. There may always may be, things may be done under the guise of, um, you know, clear, coherent, um, non-partial reporting, but it's all, they all want the eyes on, on their station so they can, you know, get more money for their 10 second, 30 second block of time uh, for, for advertising. That's what it comes down to. Um, and that's, that's not just the US, that's the world, you know, that's everything. Um, so I think it's really important to look at alternative news sources and or at the very least look at multiple news sources to try to get a, a firm understanding on things. Um, in, the, in the U.S., there's always a huge amount of debate with, uh, with, with many issues, inclu including gun control and, and laws like that and mental illness and things. So when something like this happens, you know, the debate immediately stirs, you know, and that almost gets louder than the actual, um, the actual loss that was just felt by people. And that, that to me, um, is a very conflicting thing. So let, <coughs> sorry, let's talk about something a little, little more sure. lighter here. Sure. Um, two years ago, you played here with uh, Quillatak. Okay. Do you remember the show? It was the la last show of the tour. Uh, yeah. Um, and the guys were playing a little prank on you. Do you maybe re remember that? Oh uh, yeah, bands always streak and do things that they think are hilarious. And were you, were you happy with that or? It just I don't basically care. Play. I'm not okay. naked. They are. <laughs> okay. What's pretty funny is um, we actually filmed this, and it was on national television mm -hmm. in uh, Norway, where Quellatak is from. So they all saw the, saw the guys naked. <laughs> it's it's good funny. for them. <laughs> you knowing those guys, I'm sure they were very excited about being <laughs> naked on national television in Norway. And did you ever uh, plan on getting back to them for, for going on your stage naked? No, we, we got him back on this U.S. tour. We just took him on a couple what, times. What did you do? Nothing. Okay, I see. <laughs> All right. I didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. But the others, maybe. I don't know. I'm not, I, I just know that, that, you know, things occurred. Okay. So we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Thank you very much for talking Thank to you. us. Appreciate it. Really cool. Thank you.